Good morning, everyone. Thank you all for joining us this morning to learn more about ClassBride Evaluation, our newest tool that supports teacher evaluation. My name is Cindy Barnes, and I will be introducing you all to our presenter today. Uh, some of you may know Lisa Kirsch, Kirscher, and she will be leading us through um, the presentation today of ClassBright Evaluation. We're going to spend about 30 minutes on this presentation. And um, since we have a smaller group of individuals today, if you have questions at any time, um, I believe your microphones have been unmuted. So you can, um, you can talk. Uh, the first thing I want to do is to share with you the control panel on your screen. There's an orange arrow. And you can um, mute your microphone if you want using the control panel. We also have a handout today, the informational PDF that you can access via the control panel. And you can ask a question to the group using the text chat box um, if you have any questions during the session. We'll get to those. Before we get started on the presentation, we're going to conduct a quick poll. I'm going to go ahead and launch the poll. Can everybody see the poll? Yes. Great, thank you. We'll give a few more seconds here. OK, we'll go ahead and close the poll in a second here. All right. So the poll is showing us. Can everybody see the results? The poll results show us that 67% 60 want to um, learn about more complete evidence collection. So that's great to help us guide the presentation for today. Oops, I'm sorry about that. Um, I am going to uh, be passing it over to Lisa Kirscher in a second, Kirsch, uh, but I wanted to cover what we are going to talk about today. We are going to cover our customizable rubric, our data collection tools, including the snippet walkthrough forms, formal observation, the rubric alignment of data, the evaluation process, and we'll leave some time for question and answer. So at this time, I'm going to go ahead and hand the presentation over to Kirsch. Hey, everybody. I am switching over here. And I should be able to see um, where I'm logged in to our demo site for our ClassBright evaluation system. And I'm so excited to have you here to see this because we're getting so much feedback that's so positive, not just from administrators, but also from the teachers who are using that. And you know, a lot of times teachers are not so thrilled about evaluation, but they, but they love this system. So I'm really, really happy about that and glad you're here. Um, so we're just doing some real, showing the basic um, content um, and features of the system. Just know that there are certainly more features that I'm going to be able to show uh, today, but this is the, kind of the super basic stuff. So I'm logged in as an observer. And so you see I've got a list of teachers here at the top. Those are teachers that I'm assigned as an observer on so that I can, I'll be able to add, um, uh, as you'll see, data that I observe through the different tools that I'll be um, demonstrating today. And then down here I've got reports, so there are reports that are available um, to help guide in services and other trainings for your district. I won't be going through that today, but just know that is also a feature in the system. And where I'm going to start actually is down here on the rubrics piece. So I get that this asked uh, 
uh, probably one of the most uh, questions that I get. So two things. One is you can have as many rubrics in here in your system as you would like. So we've got, you can have your certified teachers, but you can also have some for classified staff, also for district office staff. I've got um, someone who it has one specifically for principals also that I've been working with um, a district on. So you can have multiple. So this can cover all of your staff if you want to have, have the system for, for that. Um, and the coolest thing is you can customize it. It can be whatever your rubric is. So a lot of uh, districts already have um, you know, your rubrics that have been approved by the state, and you can have that in here if you would like. And we would work with you, of course, as we always do, um, to um, help you with that. And so what I'm showing you here on this particular rubric, this is a rubric that we worked closely with Alaska Gateway School District. And again, this, this, they have theirs that's been approved at the state level. And if you do not have a rubric that, is, um, that you are happy with um, and are looking for a good one, this is an excellent one um, that you can get as your default rubric as part of purchasing the evaluation system. So just know that that's an option. And you can always customize it from there if you want to. The great thing about theirs is that they've really looked at all the different models out there and they created their own. And we, we have more information about that and how that process went if you're interested. And it also has integrated the cultural standards as well. Um, so all that in one kind of one rubric. So this is what just it looks like. We've got three domains in this one, classroom environment, climate, uh, I'm sorry, classroom environment, instruction, and then down here, professionalism. And then each one you can see there's different criteria and then there's the different performance level statements. And so I'm just showing you this because the, the way the system works is you will be able to collect data that you observe on the teacher and the teacher can actually input their own data and then they would align it to one or more of these different criteria. And you'll see how it all kind of comes together where you get the data that informs that final evaluation piece where you're actually making the judgment call at the end and you've got more data. And I, I really appreciate that so many of you are looking for more complete data to, to inform your evaluations because this is what the system does the best at. So this is the rubric that everything else is based on. So that's why I want to show you that. And let's go back to my dashboard here. So I'm an observer. My name's Mac, and I am going to uh, I'm going to, going to start doing some evaluation on my teacher, Ashley Augustine. So I'm going to click into my teacher, and you can see there's nothing currently in this teacher's portfolio, right? So it's all empty for now. And I've got this alignments button. I'm going to go to the alignments. So again, here's this rubric. And right now, these zeros represent that there's no data items currently associated with any of these criteria. And as we go through this, you'll see how that starts flushing out. And what's cool about that is you'll be able to see where there are gaps in that data collection so that you, you can fill it in um, even before you get to the evaluation. So again, you'll have more complete data um, by the time you actually get to that critical evaluation piece at the end. So we have three different data collection tools, we call them. One is the snippet. One is the walkthrough forms, the, the regular forms that you're probably the most used to, and then the formal observation that you're also probably very familiar with. So I'm going to start with the snippet. And the snippet actually, this is also the same data collection tool that's available to the teacher themselves. So this is how a teacher can upload, let's say, um, a professional development certificate, or maybe there is a link to a news article where they were working with the community or you know participated in the community or something. So they can actually start filling in some of that stuff that isn't always necessarily observable in the classroom. So, but even though you're going to evaluate on it, so teachers love this because they can actually contribute. Um, to their own portfolio and show these other things that you may not see as an evaluator otherwise. So I'm just going to, uh, you can enter a note, um, let's say uh, I have a PD cert certificate that, the, that they sent me, and this can also be a video. 
This can also be a video, a short video you can upload. Um, let's say if you if you're you know observed your teacher doing a good job, let's say interacting with a student or you know something like that. It can be a video, it can be a picture, you can do it on your phone um, or an iPad device if you want to. So it makes it very easy and quick. So then again, once you've added that, I'm going to just have criteria. So here, again, this is the rubric. So let's say um, this is where I would just find the related uh, criteria that I want to assign to this, um, this particular piece of data. So you can see I've got growth goals, stays up to date in a profession, participates in, right, PD opportunities. So I'm going to go ahead and select those three criteria. I'm going to create that snippet so that will save it. It'll upload the image or the video or the PDF, you know, that I want to include. Um, and there it is. So you can see here are the criteria that are now aligned to that piece of evidence. And then this is where I could get to that PDF or the video or um, whatever document you want. Now, if I go back to the portfolio page, You'll see now, uh, instead of having no snippets, I do have the one snippet. And you can see that um, Mac Howard is the one who authored that. And again, this is where if Ashley Augustine, the teacher themselves, um, had also uploaded something, her name would be here as the author as well in addition to any of these criteria that she's aligned that document to. And I could look at that as the evaluator also. Now, the other thing is, too, when I uploaded this, the teacher themselves automatically got an email notification that some, an item was uploaded to their portfolio. So immediately, they can go in, Ashley can go in, log in, and see exactly what I've posted, um, and which is awesome. And then in here, too, um, we have automatic notifications as well. So again, it, it makes it that timely, very immediate feedback um, that the teacher gets instead of having you know a, a bunch of forms just sitting on your desk that need to be processed, which the teachers really appreciate, as you can imagine. So that's snippet, pretty straightforward and really super quick, and that's why we call it a snippet. The next data collection tool is called the walkthrough. Now these can be any kind of walkthrough form, observation form that you've been using in your district, or maybe you want to create more of them, but it's so much work. Um, that you haven't. Well, this makes it way easy. So you can have your walkthrough form, and this is the basically instead, unlike the snippet, creating a walkthrough form happens at the district level. So whoever your manager at the district level is, we would uh, show you how to use those form creating tools, uh, and each form item, as you'll see, is uh, also aligned to the criteria. And so you'll see how that works. So you can, so you don't have principals creating their own forms. You have something at the district level that's very standardized. But then you can have as many as you'd like, and maybe have different reasons to have a, a different walkthrough form. So again, you can totally use this on your phone. I'm going to pick the one that I want to do. I'm going to do the snapshot walkthrough. I'm going to create that. And I will tell you, our principals love this because, again, you can do it on your form. It's all ready to go. They can just go through and they pick off of the form. And they can skip one if they want to, if they didn't observe it or if they got, you know, um, pulled off in the middle of something. Um, it's totally fine. Uh, so... Again, but at least you're collecting some data instead of no data. And so we principals find that they've gotten so much more better data and more information um, by using this very quick tool um, that's so easy. And so again, you can skip whatever you need to do. Um, if something doesn't apply, it's totally fine. Um, and then you would save that observation. You can see how the alignments are already done for the, for the administrator. So again, so here we have completed that um, observation walkthrough. And I can see uh, the answers that are here. And I can edit that if I miss something or if I meant to pick something else, I can go back and I can, I can modify that. That's not a problem. And again, if I go to the portfolio now, here's my walkthrough that got completed. Here's the, the date. Here's the author, and again, it's 
now this is not available for teachers. It's only at the observer level that has a that has the walkthrough as a data collection tool. But you can also have more than one observer. So let's say at a site you've got a principal, but let's say the assistant superintendent or the superintendent can also come in and do a walkthrough, and then you would just have that author, you know, be listed of who did that and when. So you. That again, you can have more than one observer, you can see what the answers are, and again, the teacher immediately can get into this and see what you observed. No waiting, sitting, paper sitting on your desk, it's right there. Again, getting an email notification and being able to view that. Now the third collection tool is going to be the formal observation. Again, this is one that's usually required at some to some degree and however, whatever frequency that your district and the contract uh, you have with your teachers um, specifies, tenured or non-tenured, um, you, can, you can create this whenever. You can do it in advance if you want to, so you can set that date. Um, so we have a place, as you can see, for pre-conference notes. So let's say, you know, talk to teacher about the lesson coming up, you know, whatever kind of pre-conference notes you want. You can do that in advance. So let's say if I go back, if I log in, I'm ready, I've done the pre-conference, but now I need to actually do the observation itself, then I can just click back into that, and this is, we can see down here, I've got a notes section. So this is meant to be, allow the observer to, this is really made for a laptop, for kind of scripting what you're observing. And in this case, you want to create, instead of a whole paragraph of what you're observing, you're going to actually type in uh, kind of quick um, notes of what you're observing, because each note then Kirsch, we lost your sound. Right away or later, you can come in, and again, you can see that here's the rubric. So if we want to add this to classroom environments, for example, for climate, let's say, uh, we want to do add this criteria, mutual respect, student interest, student teacher interactions. So that's why you want, you have these discrete scripting sorts of notes, because then you align this to, the, to your rubric. Okay. So very quickly. Um, You know, you can just go through and keep scripting that for as long as you have. And again, these are notes that then the teacher themselves can see right away. And what's cool about that is the teacher, when you're done, you've left the room, it can come in when they, when they get a chance. They can look and see what you observed, and they can do that even before they come and sit for the pre-conference so that it saves a lot of time where you know they've already looked through it, they come to the post conference, and then you're able to talk about um, you know what what you observed um, and how you felt about it, um, you know, um, and so forth. Okay, so even before they get there. So I love it's completely transparent at this point um, to be able to see the kind of data um, that you've got. Now, remember on the alignments when we first started, Ashley didn't have anything, any data in her portfolio. So there was nothing aligned to those criteria for the rubric. But now that we've just done three very simple uh, data collection pieces, you can see how this is already flushing out. So some of these, like safety and routines, that came directly from that walkthrough form that was already pre-aligned. And some of the other ones from the snippet and then, you know, and so forth, and from the formal. So you can see already where you've got gaps, and the teacher sees this too. I can see what, what are the, some of the gaps um, that can be filled uh, even before the evaluation to make sure you have complete data. Now, the other thing is um, that you can include, I'm going to click into one of these, besides just these performance levels, and again, the teacher can see this too and get to this, you can also include examples of what this looks like. So for example, here I am at safety and routines, I'm going to click that view examples, and for each of these uh, performance levels, this 
gives the, both the um, evaluator and the teacher an idea of, well, what does exemplary look like for this particular criterion? And so that it's, it's a great conversation and, and kind of in that inter-rater reliability to piece that really helps everybody kind of be on the same page, like what's the difference between proficient and exemplary um, for each of these. So you can customize this and add it as many examples as, as you would like for, for what um, makes sense for you. And this often comes from conversations that you have in the district, which is what's really great because you have, um, when you have people come together and they talk about what that looks like, you know, people really see the value of having kind of everybody be on the same page and when you get new teachers and evaluators in you've already got this content of, of, of kind of the shared understanding of what this looks like for each of the performance levels. So that's just another cool feature. So now let's say I've, I've got formal observation, I've got some walkthroughs done, we've got some snippets in there. So now, now it's time to actually evaluate, make the judgment call essentially for Ashley Augustine, right? So I'm going to go back into her portfolio. Now under Add Portfolio Item, I'm actually going to go to Evaluation. So when I do the evaluation, this is a piece, Strengths, Areas of Improvement. This is something that the district can choose to pre-populate that will prompt the evaluator to add content if they want. Totally your call if you want to include anything. But that this is totally customizable at the district level. But now if I get in here, um, I, here's my evaluation, and note that this is the one piece that is not immediately available to the teacher. It is in draft form by default, and, it, in, and in draft form, the teacher does not see it. It's only when you just choose to publish it that then the teacher gets notified that it's available and is able to view it. So, and that's because this you know, tends to take a little longer um, to kind of complete, and you want to kind of chip away at it. So let's say, here I am on safety and routines, I want to make the judgment call. I can also view the same examples that I saw earlier if I want to remind myself of what that looks like between these two different performance levels. And down here, here's all that collected evidence. All that collected evidence that relates to um, this particular um, criterion, safety and routines, is right here that I can review. And I can click into these if I want, but right here, like on the forms, you can see that. Um, so it has all that data right here. So I can review that even before I decide on the rating. But once I decide on the rating, I can create a comment. Let's say, great job, I want to create that rating. And when I've done that, so it, 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 it saves that. You can see a check mark. I've done one out of 14 of these. And then I can quickly go to the next one. Again, review the collected evidence. I can create the rating. And you just, just go through. And you can always come back if you have to stop. But this way you can see kind of what your progress is. Once I feel good about this and it's all done, that's when I can publish it. So I'm just going to go ahead and click Publish. Now it's published. And now the teacher gets a notification and they can view it. And this is also, I can also where I would print it. So let's say I need, still need to print it, the final version, and then have them sign off and have, have their hard copy in their district folder. So you can see this is where you would have your district um, address and information, who the teacher is, who the evaluator is, what their, um, you know, how they rated on each of the criterion, and at the bottom we have their signature. And here's where that additional uh, comments that were, I was prompted to add some additional stuff and would, would, would flow, okay? So that's, again, high level, kind of quick and dirty, uh, how it works um, for the main features. And uh, I think we are ready for some questions or comments, anybody? Yeah, hi, Kirsch, this is Michael. Can you hear me all right? Yeah, Michael, I can. W welcome, glad to hear from you. Yeah, absolutely, no problem. Thank you. There was a couple of things that came up. Uh, I'm, I'm still trying to uh, discern where it is that, I think it was in the walkthrough snippets. Somewhere in there you said this is immediate feedback for the uh, educator. And, um, and then a little bit after that I thought you had said something along the lines, this is not available to, for them to see. So just maybe a little clarification on, on what is visible. Um, immediately that does not have to be published necessarily. 
Thank you for that, Michael. So all of the data collection pieces, the snippets, the walkthroughs, and the formal observations, mm. all of those three where you've collected data are immediately available to the teacher. What, can, the can, only can, thing that's not, go ahead. Can, can so, uh, what's the word, I'm sorry, uh, can you, that's the natural process of it. Can you yes. undo that? No, okay. that is the natural process that's of it. The only thing, the, the one thing that is not, so, and, and remember, so we, we, we treat this as these, you know, I think sometimes people are used to kind of making the judgment call when they observe it, but that's not what the system is about. This right. system is, is more for what are you observing? Think about it as objective data. Right, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. so that's why it's it's immediately transparent to the teacher, but the it's the evaluation where you make that judgment call that's more subjective, mm -hmm. but the data informs it. This is the piece that the teacher does not see right away when it's in draft form until mm -hmm. you decide to publish it and click that publish button. Yeah, I think the other is 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 the informative part for both parties to know where somebody is and where they're being viewed and how it's being viewed and such like that. that that's, that's really nicely set up, yeah. Exactly, exactly right. Because I mean, in, in the, the, with the idea that the data, what you're observing, really shouldn't be a secret, you know, and yeah. you know, you want them to know what you're seeing, right? And this is, mm -hmm. this, and that's why you try to make it objective. And, and hopefully it spurs, you know, valuable conversations along the way, even before you get to that judgment piece, right? So. Sure. Yeah. That was so my question. question. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you, Michael. Anyone, any other questions, you guys? Comments? Okay, I do have one, another one. <laughs> um, <laughs> I can't. That's just my nature, I guess. But, That's uh, great. I love it. <laughs> what, 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 what all is pre-populated, I mean, um, when it comes here? Or is anything pre-populated necessarily for... You know, I, I see it has all the Alaska State standards. Is that is that correct? So what it is, so I'm going to go to the rubrics piece. So it's up, so we can work with you and your district to, mm -hmm. if, it does, if you're, does, it, does your district, let's say, have an already approved rubric that you would use? Or are you looking oh. for something better? <laughs> well, there's always, I think everybody is, but... Uh, yeah. <laughs> I think right. that's the thing. But yes, uh, so, yes, we do have something that's established. Uh huh. Okay. So you are you. I would work with you to basically. You can add categories. You you can have the basically. You would set up this hierarchy that you see here, and mm -hmm. we would just input yours. And I've done this for a couple other districts too, where I've taken. They don't. They don't want this default one that we have available. Um, they have their own, and so I've worked with them to mm -hmm. uh, input their own already approved rubric into the system. So we it's would customized. help you with that setup. It's customized pretty much like yep. most everything you do is That's is right. Awesome. Yeah, exactly, right? You know, you have That's to make cool. it flexible. And again, you can have more than one. So like I said, you know, we have you can do classified staff. I've been working with another district. They have some specifically for their principals. They have you know, district office staff. So they actually have three rubrics right now that they're applying to their staff across the district. So Excellent. you're unlimited in terms of what you'd like to do, and then if you, if you if you don't if you you know and you're able to edit them at any time as well. So if you go, oh, I you know after we've done this for a year, we kind of want to tweak kind of the way this says, right? And you can you can do that. So let's say if I wanted to, sorry, that was a high level, but if I wanted to, well, the statement we want to change that. You can you can edit that any time, and it's very easy um, to do that and just manage that for yourself. Uh, of course, we're always here, as you know, Michael, to um, support you and, and help train, train you and kind of make it, make it you, know, you know, a way for you to just kind of take care of your own stuff, right? Mm -hmm. So you don't have to yeah. pay us all the time for stuff, <laughs> right? Yeah, nice. That's very nice. <laughs> yeah. Well, we are at the end of our 30 minutes, so I wanted to go ahead and um, share with you our contact information. Um, so if anybody has any questions or needs additional information, um, I will share with you. I'm handing it over to back to Tina. 
I can't hand okay. it over to you, Cindy, so I'll, I think Tina's going to have to okay, hand it I'll, over to you. Yeah, I'll hand it over to you. <laughs> All right, thanks. Hey, thank you. Yeah, glad to have you guys on. Thank you for your time today. Okay. There we go. Here we go. So if you have any questions or need further information on pricing or implementation or just anything that comes up, you can email me or you can contact Kirsch directly as well. And thank you all for your time. We have recorded this session, so we will email you a copy of the recorded session after this is complete. You can share it with friends um, and colleagues. And if anybody does want to take a look at a demo, we'll be um, setting up another webinar or we can do one-on-one -on -one demonstrations as well. Thank you all so much for attending, and have a fabulous day. Thank you, Cindy. Thanks. Thanks, you guys. Have Bye. a great rest of your week. Ladies? Yep. Hi. I just noticed all the attendees left.